when something gets not taken from you but when that decision's made about you it makes you realize sometimes like how much you care and how much you want it and and the only thing you can control when stuff like that happens is how you're playing rugby. And I just wanted to make myself like the best. I've always just wanted to be the best I can be. It's crucial tackle, but it doesn't matter when Natasha hunts on the pitch. Gloucester Harbury's ringmaster does it again for the circus and opens their account. And Gloucester Harbury could be in again here. Natasha Hunt under the sticks, dots it down. Gloucester Harbury running right at the stone X. Beautiful try. Oh, <laughs> hitched another one. Oh, she scores the cheekiest of tries. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster. I think everyone that plays elite sport, anyone that plays any kind of professional sport, and to be fair, anyone in life um, goes through those ups and downs. Um, it never, like, it never crossed my mind that that summer would pan out the way that it did. To be honest with you. Um, I felt like I was in decent form, I was doing all right in training, all of that sort of stuff, and never kind of had the inkling that what I was doing wasn't quite enough. At that time, they'd already had a cut in the squad. It was only gonna be four of us missing out. Yeah, it was tough. Like, my phone started ringing, so we knew that it was gonna come between, I think it was 6.30 and 7. I obviously answered the call, and um, he just said, yeah, it's not, it's not the news that you're hoping for. And I text my mum, I text Gaz, I text Sons. Um, and then I just turned my phone off. The difficulty for me was the amount of people that had an opinion on it, like in the nicest way possible. Like so many people reached out, so many people were like backing me or like had something to say on it and in like the most positive way, but I genuinely didn't have words for anyone. So then I almost just didn't communicate with anyone. Um, but I think on reflection, that was pretty tough for a lot of people because they just wanted to know that I was okay. When something gets not taken from you, but when that decision's made about you, it makes you realise sometimes like how much you care and how much you want it. And, and the only thing you can control when stuff like that happens is how you're playing rugby. And I just wanted to make myself like the best. I've always just wanted to be the best I can be. Lenny, our coach, has been brilliant in terms of like how he's dealt with me through this whole time and chucked me straight back into club, which is exactly what I needed. Last season, we lost, I think, five games by six points or less in the last 10 minutes. So we were leading to that point. And then in the last 10 minutes, we've just not quite had enough to get over the line and finish the job. And knockout rugby is huge. Like you've one shot, one kill at it. And we've not been there before, but I almost think that's exciting because we don't know what the pressure is. We don't need to put pressure on ourselves. What we've done all season is good enough. The leadership stuff I, I love, like I really enjoy just trying to get the best out of everyone. That's how I see leadership is how you like empower everyone else around you to be the best. And I think Zoe and I as co-captains really, com like we really complement each other with that. We've both got pretty varying styles. I think I'm probably more one that will be like, come on, like we've got to be better. And Zoe's very much um, arm around and says what she needs to say, but doesn't always say a lot. King's Home is a privilege for us. Obviously, we play a lot of rugby at the Alpass. Whenever we get the opportunity to run out there, to be in that changing room, we love it. We absolutely relish it. I think, for me, one of my long-term goals is to be playing rugby there in front of a packed-out shed. Like, I want to experience the shed heads, which we haven't yet. Um, I understand that it's a hostile environment, but I think for a lot of us, that raises our game. I know, especially myself and Zoe, we love those environments. We we like live and breathe it when we go and play France away for example I probably play my better rugby because you're up against it and yeah I think um, it'll be amazing to be there in front of a, a pretty full stadium and we're just calling all fans to get down because we want to we want to show you what we're about like we've worked so hard all season for this combination and if we get there for the if we're there for the home semi then come on come on down the way that the game has gone and the trajectory that it's gone at is actually a little bit mind-blowing. So even when we played at Kingston, that for me was like tear-jerk moment, just unbelievable that that amount of people are there. Obviously it was very well pitched, like England-Wales on the border, pretty much a home game for half of the Welsh squad. So like it was really well pitched in terms of that, so I knew we'd get a good crowd. But honestly, like driving in is the drive that gets me, I think. So we were driving on the bus from the Lensbury through Twickenham High Street and the streets were literally lined like four, five, six people deep. Everyone with their phones out recording the bus, waving, going mad. 
and I was just like in awe, like took my headphones out and just wanted to embrace the moment and then to get off the bus to that kind of reception and walk through the Lions Gates like that was just like unbelievable. The anthem, incredible. Just the whole th the whole day was just class and I genuinely didn't think it would happen in my rugby playing lifetime. Like sport is mental. Sport is actually crazy to have, like I've said, the probably the lowest of low I've had in my career and then potentially like the highest of high. What is that, like 11 months later? It's a long season. Um, it, I can't even put it into words.